Deborah Esposito's lab. And um, right here are my interns for the summer. I have Avinov Viduri and Haley Martina. And we're going to talk to you about our project entitled Char uh, Characterization of Brassicacea Extracts on Inflammation, Antioxidant Capacity, and Dermal Wound Healing. So as I just mentioned, uh, this summer I've had the pleasure of working with Kaylee Marchena of Queen's University of Charlotte and Avanel Maduri of the North Carolina School of Science and Math. And it, um, they have been very, very patient with me, which is important because I am a former P2EP intern myself. And this has been my first summer working as a graduate student mentor. So I, I appreciate all of your patience. Um, so for our summer project, we decided to expand upon Dr. Esposito's breast no steroid work. And as you can see in the figure, uh, breast no steroid, it's a plant hormone that is structurally similar. The structure is shown in figure A, and it's structurally similar to both animal testosterone shown in figure B, and uh, in figure C, it's similar to insect hydroxyanthysone. Now, breast steroids are found ubiquitously throughout the plant kingdom, but they're found in especially high amounts within the Brassicacea family. And within the Brassicacea family, it includes plant cruciferous vegetables like cabbage, uh, broccoli, kale, things of that sort, all of our favorite vegetables. And um, Dr. Esposito's work uh, specifically focuses on cabbage brassicacea steroid. And based on her in vivo and in vitro work, uh, she was able to determine that uh, bre cabbage brassicacea steroid not only accelerates cutaneous wound healing, but it also offers uh, protective effects in muscle and improves physical fitness. And so for our summer project, we wanted to look at other sources of brassicacea steroid uh, within the brassicacea family and try to identify any health benefits, any other health benefits that these uh, vegetables offer. So now I'm going to hand it off to Abhinav and Kaylee, and they're going to discuss the huge amount of data that we were able to achieve over a very short period of time. Thank you, Sierra. So today I'll be talking about uh, the overall goal of our project, uh, how we prepared our samples, and uh, specifically our assays that dealt with cytotoxicity, inflammation, antioxidant activity, dermal healing, and finally we'll conclude with our results. So the overall goal this summer was to characterize the health-promoting uh, properties of the breast plants, including inflammatory, antioxidant, and wound healing properties. Um, and the vegetables have showed promising health properties will be further studied in the fall. We worked with three cell lines this summer, HDA beta human dermal fibroblast or skin cells, raw or moss macrophage cells, and HEPG2 or human liver cells. We prepared our samples by selecting six locally grown grass vegetables, juicing them with a masticating juicer, freeze drying these extracts, and then um, extracting them and diving them into different concentrations for our cell assays. Uh, we also we did, the first assay we did was an MTT assay in order to see if our treatments are in any way cytotoxic. Um, uh, um, MDT is the type of chemical that when metabolized by um, active cells turns into a purple product. You can see that in that picture. Um, cells with an inactive metabolism, metabolism will fail to turn MDT into this purple product and therefore color formation serves as a uh, good sign of whether our treatments are in any way toxic to the cells. So as Sarah said earlier, Dr. Susito's work found that brassica plants have significant anti-inflammatory properties. So to further investigate this, we performed two different assays. The first is an nitric oxide assay, which quantifies the inflammatory response, and the second was a gene expression assay, which identifies how treatment affects inflammatory genes. So as I said before, the first one we did was an nitric oxide assay, which measures the inflammatory response of cells. And we did this by seeding macrophage cells, and then we treated them with progressive extracts. And nitric oxide is a signaling molecule in the inflammatory uh, response, so we induce them to have this inflammatory response by introducing a bacterial component called LPS. And then because the nitric oxide can't be detected, we performed a rise reagent system, which turns the nitric oxide byproduct into something that we can actually measure, which as you can see is in the bottom picture, the pink wells, and those are indicative of nitric oxide. And then the second one was the gene expression assay, 
which is used to identify whether MRA expression has increased or decreased because of the treatment that we added. And this is in comparison to our housekeeping gene, which in our experiment was actin. And the four genes that we looked at were IL-6, IL-1-beta, TNF-alpha, and COX-2. And we did this by isolating the RNA that was in the macrophage cells that had been treated by the Nebraska extracts. And then we used this to synthesize cDNA, which could then be used to perform real-time PCR, which is the instrument measured, that measures mRNA expression. And aside from that, uh, we also looked at antioxidant activity. And to do this, we performed the reactive oxygen species assay, which is a way of measuring oxidative stress. So in theory, we want our treatments to be able to protect cells from stressful environments. So what we did was we, again, used the macrophage cells, and we treated them with brassica extracts. And then we, again, introduced the LPS. And so as you can see, there are two different colored wells, yellow and pink. And the yellow ones are sad because they were not protected from the LPS, and it's a pH change. Whereas the pink ones are happy cells because they were hopefully protected by our treatment. We also did a dermal windling assay in order to see how our treatments would affect cell migration. Um, so we took uh, stained uh, HGFA cells, for, which were stained for uh, morphology and nuclei, and we seeded into a 96 well plate with stoppers to create an artificial wound. After an incubation period, the treatments were added and the stoppers were removed. And after the second incubation period, uh, the plate was read under a fluorescence plate reader in order to see how well the cells have migrated to close the exclusion zone. So this summer, we did complete our goal of characterizing the health-promoting benefits of brassica plants. Um, specifically, we found that MTT is not cytotoxic to cells, so this means that we can move forward with MTT studies if we choose to. Uh, second, the nitric oxide assay showed that a low concentration of broccoli and a high concentration of red cabbage and collard greens had a really significant amount of anti-inflammatory activity. And then, as you said earlier, the dermal wound healing uh, assay showed an increase in fibroblast migration of almost all the way across the board, and it all had the most significant effect. Unfortunately, our reactive oxygen species assay did not show any significant antioxidant activity, but we think that this is because of something that went wrong with our control. And then the gene expression assay did show some reduction in the inflammatory genes, which shows promising anti-inflammatory properties, but we want to replicate this test just to make sure that we have valid results. In the future, uh, in the fall, in vivo animal studies will be conducted using these brassica extracts. Uh, which had significant health promoting activity. Uh, also, our rasmaster content, which is the focus of our lab, will be quantified using HPLC. Um, we'll also characterize additional biomarkers using the RT PCR assay, and we'll repeat the ROS assay to hopefully get some more results. These are our references. Um, we'd like to thank these people for helping us. We couldn't have done it without them. And uh, if you haven't talked to us already, you can come see us at the poster.